Hello Algebra 2 students. Today we'll be doing 8.4 notes, multiply and divide rational expressions. A rational expression is a quotient of two polynomials. So basically quotient means a fraction. The two previous sections that we did, 8.2 and 8.3, we graphed rational expressions. A rational expression is in simplified form when its numerator and denominator have no common factors other than a positive one or a negative one. So plus or minus one. There are three steps to simplifying rational expressions. These are not bad, follow them. Step one, factor all expressions. This includes both the numerator and the denominator. Then state the restrictions after you factor. Step two, reduce by canceling out common factors. From the numerator and denominator, look to cancel opposites. Leave a negative one behind when you can. An example is if you have four minus X divided by X minus four, those are not the exact same thing in the numerator and denominator. However, if you rewrite the numerator so that you put the negative x first and the positive 4 second, now take a look at that over x minus 4. It's not the same, but you can factor out a negative 1 from the numerator. And that gives you, if you factor out a negative 1, you still want it to be negative x plus 4. This would have to be a positive x, and this would be, have to be a minus a negative 4, all over x minus 4. And then you can do this. You can cancel out common factors, and that is, leaves you behind a negative 1. And step 3, rewrite answer as a new simplified fraction. Remember, you can only cancel out when terms are connected by multiplication or division, not when terms are connected by addition or subtraction. I'll point that out when we do our first example. Okay, so example number one. Step one, let's factor, let's start with the numerator first, and then we'll do the denominator. So we are going to factor the numerator. It's a difference of squares pattern. You know that because these are nice numbers that you can take the square root of. So the numerator factors as x plus 2 times x minus 2. Square root of 4 is 2, just make one positive, the other negative. The bottom, you can make an x factor chart. I'm going to do it right here. Okay, b is 9. a times c, that should just be ingrained in your head. You don't have to write the letters a times c, is 14. Now to solve the sides of the puzzle, two numbers multiply 14, but added give you 9. Pretty easy, 2 and 7. So the bottom factors as x plus 2 times x plus 7. I really love this section because I like factoring. Okay, so now we are done factoring all expressions. We have not stated the restrictions. The, restric the restrictions are those values in the denominator only that will give you 0 in the denominator. So our restrictions in this case are whatever the opposite is in the denominator. So the opposite of a positive 2 is a negative 2. So why can x not equal negative 2? Because if you plug in negative 2 in the denominator, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. You can't divide by 0. The other one is x cannot equal negative 7. And these are your two restrictions. So the step 1 is all done. Step 2, we are going to cancel out common factors. Here is what is common. x plus 2 divided by x plus 2. It's not You're not dividing the x by x and the 2. That whole thing is one single expression. So those cancel. The x minus 2 and x plus 7 do not cancel. They are not common. They're not exactly alike. So our final step answer is x minus 2 over x plus 7. Answer right there, restrictions have that not equal to. Now we're going to do B. So in B, first thing we need to do in the numerator is factor out a 2 because every one of those terms is 2 in common. 2x squared plus 2x minus, or not plus 2x, plus x minus 20. You're just factoring out a 2. 
you're dividing everything by two. Bottom, you can make an x-factor chart, but I'm not going to just yet. I'm just going to write x squared plus 2x minus 15. So I'm going to make an x-factor chart for this right here. So um, b is 1, a times c is negative 20. Two numbers that multiply give you negative 20, but added that give you 1 are 5 and negative 4. Okay, so numerator done. Now let's do the denominator. And I can do it right here. Um, B is positive 2. A times C is negative 15. Two numbers multiply give you negative 15. Added give you 2 or 5 and negative 3. And now we can write our factored form. So the numerator is 2 times x plus 5 times x minus 4. The denominator is x plus 5 times x minus 3. The whole point of factoring is just to write it in a nicer way so you can cancel. And now before we cancel, we must state the restrictions of the denominator. So the restrictions in the denominator, x cannot equal negative 5 nor can x equal a positive 3. Because if it equaled either of those two numbers, you're going to get 0 in the denominator, and that makes it undefined. Okay, now canceling out like factors, x plus 5 cancels, and you're left with 2 times x minus 4 over x minus 3. And that is your answer. Now you could have kept x minus 3 in parentheses. No need to because there's no number in front of the x minus 3, so you don't need to. And we are going to do C. C looks pretty straightforward. Factor the numerator, then factor the denominator. So factoring the numerator, and I will do that right here. B is negative 11. A times C is 24. Two numbers multiply give you 24 but added give you negative 11 are negative 8 and negative 3. Okay, bottom, this denominator, a or b is negative 3, a times c is negative 40. Two numbers that multiply give you negative 40, but added give you negative 3 are negative 8 and a positive Five. Okay, so rewriting the numerator, we have x minus 8 times x minus 3. The denominator, x minus 8 times x plus 5. You don't cancel until you state your restrictions. You might want to state them right below here. x cannot equal 8, nor can x equal negative 5. So restrictions are stated. It's kind of wise to do that before you... Well, you have to do it before you simplify. Um, so now we're going to cancel out common factors. And your final answer is x minus 3 over x plus 5. Okay, example D. So start with the numerator or start with the denominator, your choice. I just start at the top. So starting with the numerator, if you look at 3x squared minus 108, you can factor out a 3. Okay, so 108 divided by 3 is 36. Bottom, we can uh, make an x factor. Okay, so b is 12, a times c is 36. 6 and 6, 6 times 6 is 36, 6 plus 6 is 12. So the bottom factors as x plus 6 times x plus 6. Notice the top factors more. And the reason why is anytime you have two terms, check to see if the middle sign is a minus and if the first and last terms are square rootable. The middle term has to be a minus sign. And it is, so that's in our favor. So we have 3 square root of 36 is 6, so a positive 6 and a negative 6. Denominator has been completely factored. Okay, 
Okay, let's state the restrictions here in the denominator. X cannot equal negative 6. There, X cannot equal negative 6. No need to write it out twice. And now we can cancel out common factors. The X plus 6 is cancel. And you are left with 3 times X minus 6 over X plus 6. Hopefully that wasn't too painful. You just have to be really good at factoring. And honestly, this factoring is not difficult. It's a really, really basic factoring. So that's the first page in simplifying rational expressions. The back page will be multiplying and dividing rational expressions. And honestly, there's just like um, an additional step when you divide. Um, but other than that, it's pretty much similar as the first page. So step number one, you factor all expressions. So again, factor the numerator and denominator completely. After you factor, you state the restrictions. If it's a division problem, and only if it's a division problem, remember when you're dividing, you're flipping the second fraction, and then you multiply. So write as a multiplication problem. State the restrictions for the second fraction. So only in dividing do you state restrictions twice. In multiplying, you don't. Um, multiply the numerators together. You don't really multiply them together. You just write them next to each other and multiply the denominators. And I'll show you when you do the example. So we're not going to we're not going to use FOIL or any other method to multiply things out. Step four. We did this on the previous page. It was just a different number step. Reduce by canceling out common factors. Rewrite answer as a new simplified fraction. So honestly, some of these steps are pretty much the same. Step one, four, and five, you saw. Steps two and three are different. So... Example two, multiply or divide the rational expressions. Well, if you look at problems A and B, A, B, C are multiplication. D, E, and F have a division sign. Okay, so with A, the easiest way to tackle this problem is, since this doesn't have any parentheses, just multiply straight across. And so the numerator multiplied is 10 times 6 is 60. And we have a total of, let's see how many x is, 2 there, 3 there, so that's 5. Remember, you don't multiply the exponents when the bases are the same, you add them. And so y, you have 3 plus 4, 7. The denominator, 2 times 18 is 36. x to the second, there are a total of 4 y's like that. That is how I would approach this because it makes it a lot easier for students. Now you want to simplify your fractions, but check, check to see if you can factor it. You can't because there's no parentheses. So we want to state our restrictions. So the denominator restrictions, x cannot equal 0 because 0 squared, I mean, that will give you 0 in the denominator, and y cannot equal 0. Okay, now I'm going to reduce 60 over 36. Oops. Make, I'm going to write down what I'm doing. So I'm going to divide top and bottom by 12. That's what I'm going to do. So I get 5 thirds. What if you had divided top and bottom by 6? Then you would have gotten 10 over 6, and then you would have to divide top and bottom by 2. You have to reduce your fraction completely. So that's what I did. So I got 5 thirds. Okay, and now remember when you're dividing and you have the same base, you're subtracting the bottom exponent from the top, and you always do all the subtraction in the top. And same with the y to the 7 minus 4. So your final answer is 5x to the third, y to the third over 3. And that's how I would tackle that problem because it makes it pretty basic and doable. Okay, the next one we're going to do is B. Now, 
even though you don't see a multiplication symbol, they're written next to each other, there is a dot there. If there's not a plus or a minus or a division, there's a dot. It means multiplying. So we are going to factor the numerator and the denominator. So we are going to have to make three X factor charts. The first one is for this. Okay, so B is negative three, A times C is negative 10. Okay, so two numbers multiplying negative 10, added give you negative three, negative five, and a positive two. Okay, now let's do this one. Made it too big. Okay, so I'll just do it right here. Okay, so B is negative 2, middle term. A times C is negative 15. And that would be a negative 5 and a positive 3. Because added together, it gives you negative 2. And this last one, remember, this is over 1. So that x squared plus 10x plus 21 is in the numerator. And so making an x factor chart for that, b is 10, a times c is 21. Um, wow, I'm thinking here for a second. 21. Oh, 3 and 7. I don't know why I had to think that hard. 3 times 7 is 21. 3 plus 7 is 10. Okay, so now let's rewrite everything so that's factored. So the numerator is x minus 5 times x plus 2. The denominator, the first one anyway, is x minus 5 times x plus 3 times um, x plus 3 plus, times x plus 7 all over 1. And so here's where you you don't really multiply the numerators together and denominators. You're just writing them next to each other. So honestly, you could just write this all over one bar like that. You're just writing them next to each other. And then you can cancel. Remember, you can only cancel top and bottom, not top, top. So we are going to actually state the restrictions first. So let's do that. So x cannot equal here in the denominator 5. And here, x cannot equal negative 3. Over there is just a positive 1 underneath, so that doesn't matter. Okay, now we are going to cancel like factors. x minus 5's cancel. x plus 3 in the numerator cancels the x plus 3 in the denominator. You can do that as long as one's in the numerator, the other's in the denominator. You can't cancel anything else, and so your final answer is x plus 2 times x plus 7 all over 1. And it's kind of pointless to write over 1 because you, it's 1. So you don't have to write the 1. And there we go. And that's how you do that problem. Okay, the next one, everything's already factored for us. Hooray! So you could just put one bar there because you know it means multiply. Mm -hmm. And all we have to do is, it's already, everything's factored for us, parentheses are already there, everything's linear, we need to state the restrictions. So here, x cannot equal 0, or else you have 0 in the denominator, and there, x cannot equal negative 5, because negative 5 plus 5 would give you 0. We don't want that. And now it's time to cancel like factors, the fun part, x plus 5's cancel. Oh, I found something too. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And then lastly, well, I'm going to go ahead and write that part out. So, so far we have this. We have 2, because 4 divided by 2 is 2. So 2x times x plus 1, because the x plus 5 is crossed out, and the bottom is x squared. We have one more thing that can cancel, and here is what it is. Um, I'll, and I, I think it's easiest to show you this. Um, it's 2x. Remember, x squared is x times x. 
So you can cancel one set of these X's. And so your final answer is 2 times X plus 1 over X. And we already stated the restrictions. I already boxed them up. So we are golden there. And that is it. And now we are going to do the division problem. So this is where you do restrictions twice. So the first thing I'm going to do is because it's division, you can't multiply anything. You have to flip the second fraction and then multiply. So I'm going to do that. 8x squared, y squared, z over xz to the third. That's our first fraction. Times flip the second fraction. So actually, you know what? We need to state our restrictions right now before because there's no factoring involved so if you look here in the denominator x cannot equal zero or z cannot equal zero so x cannot equal zero z cannot equal zero and they're the same thing x cannot equal zero so you don't have to write it out twice so here's two of the restrictions there's going to be a third one. So I should, probably should have boxed it up, but that's okay. We can box it up in multiple places. So multi flip the second fraction. So x to the fourth now, z becomes a numerator. And the denominator is 10xy. And now you state the restriction again because you did flipping. So stating an extra rest restriction, here x cannot equal 0, but there y cannot equal 0. So you actually have three restrictions. x cannot equal 0, z cannot equal 0, and y cannot equal 0. And it doesn't matter if you write in multiple spots as long as you've boxed in everything. And now we can multiply straight across. So we have 8x to the 6 because 4 plus 2 is 6. y to the 2nd. There are a total of the two z's, so z to the 2nd. Bottom is 10x squared y, I'm going to write them in alphabetical order, z to the third. Okay, now the wonderful part of simplifying. We want to reduce 8 tenths, which is 4 fifths. Okay, and then we have x to the 6 minus 2. Subtract the um, bottom exponent from the top y to the 2 minus 1 and z to the 2 minus 3. So simplifying even further, we have 4 fifths x to the 4th, y to the 1st, I'm not going to put a 1 there, z to the negative 1. And hopefully you remember you cannot have negative exponents in your final answer. So if it's a negative exponent, move it. Um, you don't move anything else. It, in numbers can be negative. Exponents cannot be negative. So x to the fourth stays, y to the first stays, but the z to the negative first gets moved to the bottom, becomes z to the first. That is your answer. Okay, okay now we have e and f, and to do e, we want to first factor the second fraction. The first fraction is linear, so it does not factor. So we are going to factor this numerator by factoring out an 8. You know what? I did to make an arrow there. So. But I do need to make an x factor for this. Okay, so b is 6, a times c is negative 7, 7 and negative 1 satisfy that puzzle. And so the first fraction you don't do anything to, divided by, don't flip it yet, because we have to factor first. So the top one we're going to factor on an 8x, because they both have an 8x in common, leaving us with x minus 1. Because if you multiply all that out, you are going to still get 8x squared minus 8x. And the bottom is x plus 7 times x minus 1, because we just factored it. x factored it. Okay, now we're ready to list our restrictions. 
Here, x cannot equal negative 7. There, x cannot equal negative 7. No need to write it out twice. And here, x cannot equal 1. So you can box up individual restrictions, and there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, now we are ready to flip and multiply the second fraction. So denominator becomes a numerator. And now you have to list your restrictions again because you flipped. So the 3 over x plus 7, that restriction is still x equals negative 7. Here, though, x cannot equal 0. And there, x cannot equal 1. So we found a third restriction. Go. And we are ready to um, write them all next to each other. So 3 over x plus 7. That's kind of getting a little, okay, I'm going to erase that. Oh, you know, actually, I'm not going to erase it. I'm just going to put the 8x out here at the front. It doesn't matter where you put things. And then x minus 1 here. And we have an x minus 1 on top, too. So I just wrote everything next to each other, and now I'm ready to cancel. So I've already listed my restrictions. 3, three over 8 does not reduce any. These x plus 7s cancel. These x minus 1s cancel. Your final answer is 3 over 8x. What a nice looking answer for a scary looking problem. Okay, and our last one. So x factor this. Okay, so your b is negative 4. A times C is negative 5, negative 5 times 1 is negative 5, negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. The bottom does not factor. This factors as B is 6, A times C is 5, 1 times 5 is 5, 1 times 5 is 6. So we are ready to um, write it in factored form. So X minus 5 times x plus 1 over x minus 5, or over x plus 5, sorry, divided by x plus 1 times x plus 5 over 1, because that's all it is, it's written over 1, we are ready to write our restrictions. Here, x cannot equal negative 5. And on the other fraction, there is no variable in the denominator, so there's no restriction right now. So here is restriction number one. Okay, now we are ready to flip and multiply by the second fraction. So x minus 5, never flip the first fraction, ever. So times, 1 goes on top, x plus 1 times x minus x plus 5 goes on the bottom. And you have new restrictions. There, x cannot equal negative 1. And here, x cannot equal negative 5, but we already wrote that. So we have a total of two restrictions. And we are ready to um, write everything next to each other. So x minus 5 times x plus 1. And since there's a 1, you don't need to put that. And then we have on the bottom this first x plus 5. Then we have an x plus 1 and an x plus 5. So I've put it all over one fraction. Now we're ready to cancel. So what's alike? These are alike. And that is it that I see alike because x minus 5 and x plus 5 are not alike. So your final answer is x minus 5 in the numerator divided by x plus 5 times x plus 5. And if you're lazy, you can write x plus 5 to the second power because that's what it is. It's written out, or you can write it out twice or just write x plus 5 squared. And those are your notes for today. Have a great day, Algebra 2 students.